today I have the Lavender Alpine heater for us to look at. So let's get it out of the box and we'll have a look at all the bits and then we will set it all up and we will uh, go through all of its uh, features. I have to say it's very nicely packed with our book of instructions. Now, this is the Lavender Pro Alpine, as I mentioned. And the main difference between the Alpine heater and the standard diesel heater is, well, there's two main things, is the altitude fuel correction. So, depending on what altitude you are above, oh, is it a thousand meters or a thousand feet? As you climb in altitude, it reduces the fuel quantity by uh, a percentage so that you always maintain a good air fuel balance and correct burning and uh, actual being able to light it and not just getting plumes of white smoke out if you try to light it at altitude and also not getting plumes of black smoke when you're trying to run it at altitude. I will put a, 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 a gif, not a gif, a, a, an image on screen just now of the fuel trim at various altitudes and should I ever work out how to go to or simulate an altitude of such heights, we will test it. Because currently, nowhere round about me is high enough for us to test uh, the altitude correction uh, in, in real life. And the other feature that it has that people asked me before and I was confused by, but I kind of understand now, is ventilation mode, where basically you're bringing just pure air in from the outside and people are bringing pure air in and heating it up to always supply a fresh supply of air into their camper van, which I understand now. And what they wanted was a mode where they could just turn the fan on in the heater. So it's not heating, it's just pulling air in and pulling air in through. So that is a feature of the Alpine model as well. And I've kind of thumbed through the instructions here, which are nice and clear and there's lots of pictures and all things, uh, which is good. It's a, actually a well-written instruction manual. Right, that is the controller. Inside this box should be the usual box of doings, you know, fuel pump, fuel line, all the clips and connectors and the exhaust and the air intake, so there's your rigid fuel line that everyone likes. The nice heavy, nice exhaust. Silencer, which we know are mostly okay. That's actually quite a nice silencer, that one. Sounds like it's actually got things inside it. Uh, vent end doings for your ventilation. There's a T piece as well on that one. Bag of nuts, bolts, screws, hose clips, clamps, all the things you need to attach. A collection of cable ties. Oh, another thing on the in these years is the the new the new wiring. It's uh, all actually heavy duty plugs and, well, we'll call them water resistant connectors because truly waterproof connectors don't really, well, they do exist. Well, well they're waterproof. We'll say, we'll say waterproof in the terms of automotive, they are as waterproof as it gets. It's also got this nice little uh, built in fuse box now, which is, I think that's a nice feature because it saves you buying a fuse box to add in your camper van, which. You should do, you should always run a fused supply. And that's just a connection to, oh, that one's to the heater body itself. You've got one to the fuel pump. And like I say, it's just positive and negative onto the battery. And the last things in the box are a bit of uh, air ducting, <coughs> air intake, pipe, more ducting, Ooh, more ducting. Uh, air intake sensor, the fuel pump, and the uh, fuel filter and fuel uh, hose connectors that connect onto the rigid fuel line. Uh, let's say filter, filler, hose clamps, etc. etc. Oh, and uh, the base plate for attaching it to your floor or wall or whatever, and the standpipe that you can 
poke into your fuel tank to draw up diesel from the vehicle fuel tank. That is, oh jeez, excuse me, everything in there. Most of this stuff we will not require on the test bench. So allow me a moment to set up the test bench and we will go through uh, start and running and I'll show you some of the, well I can't, I can show you one of the features of the uh, diesel here, the other one obviously altitude, I, I will need to work out how to simulate it but we will get back to that. Right, let me set this all up. Right, I have the heater set up in its uh, test bench, I've got the exhaust coming out this end going that way up to the extract van, the air intake and sensor down underneath and at the bottom, I've got the controller plugged in here, fuel pump sitting here, this is the fuel tank in there, fuel feed in the pump, out the pump, down underneath into the heater. And I just wanted to show you these uh, new style of connectors. Right, let me zoom in a bit on them. Let me see if I can manage to keep these in shot. So these are, they're very automotive style. I usually see these on ECUs and things inside your car. So to get them to clip together, you need to move this red maroon coloured piece back. I do that with the aid of a screwdriver, which lets you unclip the sides. Stay, screwdriver gonna roll for bench, stay. That moves the this back, unlocking these tabs, which lets you then locate the same uh, four tabs on the heater side, and then they go together. If I can get my hands out of the shot, it would be even better. They go down a bit, down a bit, back a bit, over a bit, down, there we go. They go together, and then you push them together and squeeze the whole thing together, and it joins the connection together and everything's made, like that. Right, let us do the first run and priming for this bad boy. Now, the instruction manual says, you press and hold the ventilate and heater on, hold them for five seconds, and then everything will turn on, the pump will run really fast, and then it'll prime it, and it'll, while it's priming the fuel pump, the glow, pl glow plug is on the whole time, so it lights, it kind of runs, and then it shuts down, and then it starts back up uh, normally. Remember, this is just for the very first time you're going to use it, and obviously your fuel lines are empty, if you can see here. So let's press and hold. Huh? Do? Do Green light comes on. Can you see green light? Green light starts flashing. Green light is flashing. I'll put this down. The fan is on, it started fanning, I can hear the fan running. And in a moment, there we go, right, fuel pump is on, running fast. Hopefully in a second we'll see fuel coming up. There's the fuel, following my finger. Fuel coming on, into pump, pump will sound will change a little bit. Now I'll push that all the way down the line into the diesel here. Um, I will speed some of these bits up, I will just speed them up because it might take a bit of time. Save boring you to death with the priming. Okay, you can't hear, you might not be here, but the glow plug running, the fuel is now just hit the glow plug and is lit, it's, it started a burn. I can see smoke coming out of the exhaust. The pump has gone off. The fan's still running. It's still got a burn going on inside with all the fuel it just fired in. Now the pump is started and is running, we'll call it at a normal pace. Glow plugs on, pump's running. You can see some of the smoke from the diesel and grease that I've got everywhere. So now it's going to do its burn and burn off all the fuel that it just filled up the burn chamber with. So it'll do a, a hot burn to burn all of that out. Well, the heater is now uh, running normally. I think I was mistaken before when I said it heats itself up it's running and then shuts down and then it starts back up again. It just heats itself up till it gets to a, a hot running temperature and then just settles down to whatever you've set the controller to. 
and then that's it it's it's primed and it's running and you shouldn't have to do that again unless you disconnect your um, fuel supply to your pump and then to get it to stop you just press and hold the heater stop the green light goes out and then it'll just run through its uh, entire cooldown sequence all right i have returned with a cup of coffee and more understanding of what i'm doing wrong because i'm mostly just an idiot so heater on and off or t sorry heater on heater off and the ventilation and depending on what mode you're in if you're in heater mode this controls the temperature of what you're doing between a minimum there's a very hard to see arrow can you see the there's an arrow there that indicates where where it's going so that's minimum and then you can turn it all the way around to maximum at that end so in heating mode that's your temperature and in ventilation mode that's your fan speed so i will show you ventilation mode although it's not exactly exciting to see so you just press and hold the fan let me see if i can do it put my finger in the way press and hold fan for two seconds the green light comes on and the fan runs right uh, can you hear the fan running i'll just show you the fan running with a uh, um, a bit of paper the fan is running Ooh, and sucks in this side watch Oink. fan is running and it's just blowing uh, air so um yes um that was a thing people had asked for when they were pl they wanted to plumb this into their camper vans etc and have this oh, sorry I've, I've had it running there's still residual heat in it and it detects it and then it tries to cool itself down again then it'll just go back to being a normal cool air, in, air intake um so as i was saying uh, yeah they wanted the heater in the van and they wanted the bit they wanted to put their ducting on this end and have this end uh, to the outside so they could bring in outside air heat it up and heat the van up with um, you know fresh air from outside they also wanted in the summer the option of just bringing in air from outside and filling the van with fresh air so that's what ventilation mode lets you do it just lets you run the heater without heat just basically a fan you can turn it up and get more fan more fan go it doesn't exactly react instantly though it takes a moment for it to there it goes i know move my microphone in so you can hear it speeding up so there you go it just speeds up and slows down depending on what you set the little dial to uh where's about half about halfway now slow down again to halfway and then like quarter and that's minimum 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 it's relatively quiet at minimum you probably can't hear it from the uh, lapel mic but uh oh god do you want a do you want a decibel reading i'll give you a decibel reading hold on Okay, so that says 50 decibels at well, almost zero distance. Do you want maximum? Well, we call that 66. Let's call that 66. Right, and you just press and hold the off to turn it off. Green light goes out, turns off. There you go, it has stopped. I'm having a drink of coffee. Ah, uh, right, so. <coughs> choke to death my coffee. And the only other one is heating mode. And you just press and hold the heating button. Oh, so I can do it without getting everything in the shot. Press and hold. And then, did the light up? Green light's on. Heater's on, Run, running in the background and now puts a glow plug on, puts a fuel in, lights, goes up to temperature, then comes back down and sits at running temperature. It does have a bit in the instructions where it says, if the set temperature is still exceeded in the smallest control stage, the heater goes into off stage with the fan running for approximately four minutes to cool off, then the fan continues at minimum speed circulation or is switched off fresh remote until the heater starts again. I think that does what the... Um, the the old LCD one tried to do as well. Uh, it basically, so if you set this to minimum 
I don't know what the minimum temperature actually corresponds to. But let's just say that's 30 degrees. Once it detects the air output, or the air in and the air out are going to are the same and have been the same for a while, it'll just turn the heater off. It'll it'll give up basically and it'll just uh, cool itself down and just be uh, sitting there and idle. The LCD controller does that as well. I found out when it gets by what well, I actually found out with a broken one that always thought the temperature was far too high and it would get to 32 degrees and then turn off because it decided that even on its lowest setting the temperature inside was higher than it it, it could um, you know it was too hot for it and it would uh, shut down so this does the same thing so let's say like if minimum was I don't know like 30 degrees and inside your van got to 30 degrees obviously it realises it's only adding to the temperature and it can't it can't stay below your set temperature, it'll turn the heater off, which is quite handy. That's lit in the background. And it's uh, what I'm going to do now is wait for it to start up and run, and then we'll take a carbon monoxide reading at the exhaust. Just ignore that thing because it, remember, it gets you a weird reading if you move it fast. So we're currently at zero. I've got the extractor fan off just now and the door shut, so. We'll let this run up, run its go plug off and then come back down to minimum uh, idle running speed and then we'll get a carbon monoxide reading. I have to say, this also starts up a lot faster than the other heaters. It goes from, well, fun enough, off to operational a lot faster. Like, it actually knows what it's doing and what temperature's coming out. It doesn't just go through a set run, no matter what temperature is. It actually, it gets up and active so here we are near the exhaust I mean that's not it's not terrible no oh, the fuel pump just changed note again it's not great but it's not it's not terrible I'm actually even in shot would be I'm just in shot get a bit nearer the temperature's climbing though so it's not terrible. It's not great, but it's not terrible. Let's let's try for maximum power. Let's take it to the max. Right, we're we recording. I am recording. Right, that's at full power. That's better. Like 15. Anywhere between 10 and 20, I'd be happy with. Ha, ah, it's getting hot over here though. Uh, let's put it back down to minimum again for a retest. See, cause uh, what I did was not realise or not remember that the exhaust heat output from the heater was obviously blowing more fresh air over towards the sensor, so we have ducted it out of the way so that we are only getting a reading from the exhaust output. Mm, try to work backwards here. There we go. So as it gets to lower, should get worse until it evens out again. So as is typical with most heaters, the low setting isn't as isn't an isn't the low setting isn't as an efficient burn as the high setting. Ha! That's hot. Poor thing. Need to wait for the sensor cool down again. But all in all, that's not terrible. Right, while this is uh, shutting down, we'll talk about a few more things. Now, obviously, it's got this very basic control panel. You've just basically got heater on, heater on, ventilation off, and ventilation on, and then a, you know, a rotary control for adjusting the temperature. There's no LCD, there's no feedback, you can't see what uh, its temperature is set for, you can't adjust any settings. Now, Obviously, you can't adjust any fuel settings because it's controlling the fuel input based on altitude or air pressure. I'll put the thing on screen again. You can see what, what altitude uh, results in, what reduction in the input of fuel, which means it works at high altitudes and normal altitude and all the places in between. Uh, it's also got a few, well it's got an additional sensor or two over the normal uh, 
um, lavender heaters and well all the other diesel Chinese diesel heaters out there at the moment and once this has run down and cooled down I'll take the cover off and I will show you inside right let's have a looky inside the beast and cap off two clips to release the housing so the first sensor which the other uh, smaller uh, lavender one also had is this one which is the air intake temperature sensor so it knows the temperature of the air coming in but this one also has well, I'm going to bring you out the tripod and bring you in for a zoom in so that white bit there that's your typical body temperature sensor but can you see there is another smaller component that is sticking out over the top and has an additional two wires uh, coming along and going to the ECU that is the output air temperature sensor so it can measure in and out and work out the fueling and the fan speed from there so it's not a comp well, it's not as much as a guess as with the not a guess but obviously the room thermostat isn't a room thermostat anymore it's just a controller and you just set your output air temperature to whatever output air temperature that you want and then there is the the main ECU, which hopefully we'll be able to get a look inside without me having to take everything out this time, maybe. Nah, we'll just take it off anyway. Give me a... Not that one. You'd think I would get it right just once. Even just one spag, and I would get the right size. One. Right. Don't drop inside, don't drop inside. There we go. Right. Let's just take, ha! Ah, that's still a little bit warm. This out and off. And that. Right. Now, let me unplug the mo electric, the DC motor, is this one? DC motor. Again, you'll see they're nice uh, waterproof style connectors. I'll, I'll, I'll bring it over for a proper look in a minute. Uh, glow plug, temperature, uh, housing temperature sensor and the air temperature sensor and and here is the main ECU body let me just actually unplug it so I can bring it all the way over just unplug the thing right here we go so let's take the cap off if we can can we get it without either breaking our fingernails or anything else Maybe not. Maybe I'm... All I need is more hands. Oh wow, that's that's why I can't open it. Because it's absolutely jammed full of uh, potting and conformal coating. Okay, well, I don't need to open that then. As I peered inside, you can see it is absolutely full of potting and... Well, even there, where the fan speed sensor is. I can see it leaking out from around here, so it is absolutely jammed full of uh, protective coating. Right, this bit popped out last time so we could see see the wires inside. Yeah, it is absolutely, absolutely coated. Well, don't need to worry about the ingress of moisture in this then. So even if these weren't sealed on this side, it's uh, the circuit board's actually covered so it wouldn't matter anyway but the, uh, these are uh, the rubber they do have a name somebody posted the name of those connectors oh, I wish I could remember what it was but these are these are nice the rubber grommet around them keeps the moisture out no leaks so yeah this is uh, this is nice this is I'm, I'm even more impressed than I was previously they've they have literally Lavender have taken all the things that people have said and then they've built it into a heater. Now, imagine, for well, the next stage, people are going to say, oh, can we get a better controller? And, you know, with maybe a screen on it so you can set temperatures and things like that. And, hey, I imagine Lavender will absolutely work towards, if they're not already, working towards the next version of this here with more controls, etc. Now, let me see if I can put this back in. Uh, glow plug is a big one. Ah, uh, squadge that in there, and then a the little green one. 
Oh, I should note that these can only go in uh, the ones placed. They've got slots and cutouts on them, so they only fit back into where they came out of. You can't put them in the wrong holes. Yeah, if you put them in the wrong holes, you have to press really, really, really hard and break all the tabs off the connections to get them to go in. If it doesn't slide in easily, it's the wrong hole. Like just now, which I'm possibly putting the motor one in backwards. Right, so that was the Lavener Pro Alpine. This is the 5 kilowatt version. I'll leave a link to the, the Lavener website, Facebook, AliExpress store, all the things in the description. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, uh, please leave them down below or send me a Facebook message, send me an email, whatever you want. And I, I am genuinely impressed that Lavener has taken all of the comments and feedback and requests from what people have asked for and actually built it into a heater and made, well, exactly pretty much what the customer want, wanted. The customers being you people with camper vans, etc, etc and other uh, diesel heater requirement builds. Uh, and uh, no, people are going to ask if this will connect to the afterburner and no it will not. It is the completely wrong connection. I imagine it's a completely wrong communications protocol. And the fact that it's, this one is actually adjusting the fueling based on altitude and not just pretend doing it like the other ones do. As I said, if I find out a way to simulate the drop in air pressure or if I can actually find somewhere I can go that's high enough to get this to adjust, we will absolutely do that in another video. And if there's anything else, any other test you'd like to see done on this here, uh, just let me know because now I've got this sweet ass test bench to do things on, I can just like pick up the whole thing and move out of the way while I do other things and then put it back when I want to do more tests. I don't have to fiddle about and connecting up fuel and having fuel everywhere. It's all here in one place and it's fucking amazing. So uh, thank you to Greg who sent me that. It is absolutely sweet as. And as always folks, thanks for watching.